Walter, as a philosopher, you have focused on neuroscience and how it impacts uh, modern society. Uh, what are the categories that we should at least begin to explore to see this impact? Well, I think one category is uh, neuroscientific uh, drugs and medications that are going to affect our brain uh, performance. So there are big issues about enhancement, for example, mm -hmm. uh, which are part of neuroscience and society. And our society could get affected in deep ways, not just by cognitive enhancers like Ritalin and Adderall and other drugs that help people with ADHD and ADD perform better and are used by people without those illnesses to perform yet better, uh, but also by the potential for moral enhancement, uh, drugs that might make people more sympathetic and empathetic in the right ways. Uh, all those are very controversial issues, but that's one way in which neuroscience might make a big impact. That sounds potentially dangerous because it goes back to uh, um, uh, uh, chemical uh, approaches to pedophiles and how you intervene and, and uh, making people uh, more uh, socially acceptable by changing their whole personality. So. Yeah. All of these things are very dangerous. That's why we have to think them through very carefully. Not wait till they're out there amongst everybody and then raise the alarm bells, mm -hmm. but right now from the start, start thinking about the implications. Okay, so medical uh, so that's one. drugs are one. one yeah. Two, one, two. Uh, questions of responsibility, both legal responsibility and also moral responsibility. Uh, will neuroscience make us rethink the kinds of people we are? Uh, and the kinds of relationships we have with each other, especially with regard to criminal law, for example. Should we hold adolescents fully responsible? Should we hold psychopaths fully responsible? What about people with Alzheimer's uh, and so on and so on? Uh, addicts and uh, schizophrenics. When we understand what's going on in their brains, that might change the way we think about responsibility. And that's going to affect the way we react to them. Because we act differently to people who we hold responsible when they harm us than we do to people sure. who harm us just as much, but we don't think they're responsible for it. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like there can ever be a clean line of distinction between the two. Uh, between where the my brain made me do it because my brain has a huge tumor in it and my brain made me do it because I'm just a bad person. So I'm so glad you said that because I totally agree. Responsibility comes in degrees. It does, it's not an on-off notion. It's not like you're responsible or not. Uh, there are going to be different degrees. And so it's not going to be so clear-cut. We're going to have to learn to say, well, they're responsible in this way to this degree, but in this other respect, they're not responsible at all. And in this other way, they're fully responsible. So there can be different types of responsibility and different degrees within each of those types. It's not going to be a simple yes or no answer. And is that a slippery slope that you then don't even know where you are and you have different judgments by different people? I mean, that's that seems uh, the opposite of what the rule of law is supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, there's always going to be different answers by different people. These are complex, controversial issues. So if you're scared of controversy, get out of this field. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have medical, legal, any other categories, big categories where uh, neuroscience will affect society? Mind detection. So people think of mind detection often first about lie detection and its potential use, not just in courtrooms, but in marriages. It turns out that one lie detection company, the biggest group of their customers are people who've been accused by their spouses of having an affair yeah. and they want to deny it and have their spouse believe it. <laughs> uh, so that's going to affect society, but also the detection of memories, the detection of pain. A lot of people claim, oh, I can't do my job anymore. I've been disabled. You've got to pay me disability benefits for the rest of my life because I have this chronic pain. Well. Most of them are telling the truth, I'm sure, but a significant number are lying. And then the insurance rates go up for all of us. And the, big, the other mind detection issue that I'm particularly interested in is people who have suffered traumatic brain injury and have been diagnosed in persistent vegetative states. Mm -hmm. And yet it looks like as many as 40% of the patients with traumatic brain injury who have been diagnosed in persistent vegetative state really have some level of consciousness. 
not full consciousness like you and me, but still some levels of consciousness. So they've been misdiagnosed. And neuroscience has ways of detecting that, uh, that cannot be observed from the bedside. So these are all very significant impacts on, uh, on real life. Um, what, what do you, can you forecast uh, what this may mean? I mean, is this, is this going to be very disruptive? I'm sure it's going to be disruptive. The question is whether it's going to be disruptive in a good way or a bad way. Uh, but when things change, it's going to be disruptive. We will have to change our concepts and our beliefs and our behaviors and our practices and our institutions to accommodate all of this new knowledge. Can I forecast it? No way. I can make generalizations, which will be pretty empty. But think about it. It was only 25 years ago that the very first fMRI study was ever published. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable how much has changed in that period. So if you ask me to project 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years in the future, I think anybody in their right mind would just have to say, I know there will be changes, but I don't know exactly what those changes will be. But what's your biggest worry? Well, my biggest worry is that any one of these things could go wrong. Uh, medications could be used. We could find out that Adderall and Ritalin are helping people in the short term and creating long term problems. And if they're used on a widespread basis, that's going to be a gigantic problem for a large number of people. Uh, my worry is that denying responsibility on the basis of neuroscience will lead to bad uh, criminal practices, uh, which will let more uh, dangerous people out on the streets. Uh, and my worry with regard to uh, mind reading is that uh, we'll lose privacy of a sort that's very important to many people. So there are many dangers, but there are also many potential benefits. Uh, take, for example, prediction. You can use neuroscience now to predict criminal behavior. Right before that, we were letting out dangerous people and keeping in prisons people who were not dangerous. And everybody becomes scared, and then it ramps up the penalties for everybody in prison. And that's how we end up with more prisoners than any other uh, country on Earth. Uh, and so now, if we can use neuroscience to distinguish them, there's a big hope there. But there's also a danger. We could get it wrong, and we could keep people in prison who are not dangerous if we get it wrong. So it's important to move ahead in all of these areas, and it's also important to move ahead carefully and correctly and accurately, and to make sure that we're not causing all the potential harms, but instead are bringing those potential benefits.